This is the front door from number 7 Echo Street, famous in Joyce's novel Ulysses. In 1909, when John Francis Byrne, a friend of Joyce's, was living at number 7 Echo Street, Joyce was on a return visit to Dublin uh, from Trieste. Now, when Joyce came back to Dublin in 1909, it was his first return visit to the city. Joyce was very proud of how he had succeeded away from the city of Dublin, and he brought his four-year-old son, Giorgio, back very much to show off to family and friends. Joyce made a point of going around to visit a lot of his old school friends and university friends to tell them how well he was doing abroad. One of them had a particular consequence for Joyce. Vincent Cosgrave, whom Joyce had known at university, uh, went with Joyce drinking for an afternoon. And in the course of that afternoon, Vincent Cosgrave claimed that on nights when Joyce wasn't seeing Nora Barnacle in 1904, that Cosgrave had been seeing her instead. And Joyce felt devastated by this. It turned out, it seemed, that his wife had been unfaithful to him, if you like, disloyal to him. And this sense of betrayal was absolutely horrific for Joyce. And he dashed off a couple of really nasty letters to Nora, claiming that she had betrayed him with this so-called friend of his, and also asking her if Giorgio was his son or not. Now, during that time, he revisited Number 7 Eccles Street to visit his friend John Francis Byrne, and Byrne told him that as far as he was concerned, Nora had been faithful to him all the time, and that what Cosgrave was telling him was a load of rubbish. Uh, Joyce refers to it as a blasted lie. Now, Joyce stayed in the house at number 7 Echo Street that night, uh, went to bed after supper, and left after breakfast the following morning. But it seems, at that stage, he was completely reconciled with Nora, and he started writing letters to her again, this time begging for her forgiveness. He even sent her a stone of shell cocoa, partly because he thought the cocoa curves uh, would be nice on Nora. But that sense of reconciliation, uh, the moment shifting from betrayal and disloyalty to sudden reconciliation with his wife Nora. Uh, Joyce associated with the house at number 7 Eccles Street, and so perhaps in that, for that reason he chooses it as the location for his, uh, uh, the hero of his novel Ulysses. So Mr. Bloom, when we meet him first in the fourth episode of Ulysses, leaves the house ostensibly through this front door and goes on his wanderings around the city of Dublin. Now Joyce went on a similar wandering with his friend John Francis Byrne towards the end of August 1909 during that return visit to Dublin. As they wandered around the city, Byrne stopped at a chemist to weigh himself and his weight 11 stone, 4 pounds, becomes the weight of Mr. Bloom in Joyce's novel Ulysses. Mr. Bloom also has the same height as John Francis Byrne, 5 foot 9 and a half inches. Now, when they returned to the house at number 7 Eccles Street, Byrne discovered that he hadn't got his front door key with him, and he had to climb over the railings of the house, lower himself into the basement area, and enter the house through the basement kitchen door, so that he could come back up and open the front door to allow Joyce into the house. This incident also happens to Leopold Bloom in the novel Ulysses. Now, along with the other houses in that area of Eccles Street, it was part of the demolition of the street to make way for the new Matter Hospital that now stands on that site. Now, various people were concerned about the possibility that Number 7 would disappear forever, and Patrick Kavanagh, the poet, and Flann O'Brien, the novelist, went to the house and removed the front door from Number 7 Echo Street and brought it to the Bailey pub on Duke Street. The Bailey, of course, was the writers and artists pub at the time. And there, on Bloomsday, the 16th of June, 1967, it was officially declared closed by Patrick Kavanagh. Now, the door remained in the pub for most of the next 30 years. Unfortunately, during that time, the knocker from the door was stolen off it and was replaced with the one that you see today. 
And by 1995, with the opening of the James Joyce Centre on North Great George's Street, Marks and Spencers, who then owned the Bailey Pub, decided, very generously, to lend the door on a long-term loan to the Joyce Centre. And here, it was matched with its original stone surround. So the two parts of the door were back together for the first time from the early 60s. And so the door, this vital piece of Joyce's life and of his novel Ulysses, now has become part of the exhibitions here at the Joyce Centre.